So six uh, six questions. So this is the first of them. Uh, let me, in case I need to write anything, let me bring in the annotation tool. So the first question asks, which of the following are not one of the three basic types of traveling waves mentioned in the text? Oh, it's been a while since I've uh, read OpenStax textbook, so I don't know for sure uh, what they've mentioned. Um, let's see. I feel like they probably would have mentioned electromagnetic waves. That's such a common classic example that they would have mentioned this. So let me do a process of elimination. Um, so this is not the answer. Um, mechanical waves, they probably mentioned it, like sound waves, whatever. Um, so I'm going between, um, choosing between these two, stadium audience waves or metal waves. Uh, that's such a difficult choice. So I know in my own lecture, I actually mentioned stadium audience waves as an example of uh, non-physical kind of wave as a way to demonstrate uh, um, the kind of generality of waves. I don't know if that's mentioned in the textbook. And metal wave, it's a quantum mechanics topic. I can imagine the textbook mentioning it. <laughs> so, um, let me go with matter waves because that's uh, how that's consistent with my lecture. <laughs> now, if I'm wrong, I'm going to go back and choose this because that's probably the correct answer if I'm wrong about the matter waves. So, yeah, okay. So the textbook must have mentioned the matter waves. <laughs> so it's the stadium audience waves that, you know, I mentioned it in my lecture. I think the textbook should have mentioned it. It's a kind of traveling wave. It's it, it's more fun than matter waves, <laughs> but yeah, it, this is a reading short question and it's uh, revealing that I haven't read the textbook in a while. Uh, I skimmed it through it at some point, but um, <laughs> I, I don't, I rewatch my own lectures every semester. I don't reread the textbook every semester. So, all right, let's keep going. Uh, it is convenient to use the quantity. Yeah, this is called a wave number. Uh, it's, I, I don't really know why it's called a wave number. I can just tell you that it's called a wave number. And when it says wavelength, uh, what is the wavelength? It's uh, this quantity here. And angular frequency, you will usually see letter omega, which looks like W, but it's not W. Omega, um, that's angular frequency, which is 2 pi times frequency. Um, uh, wave number is really, they, these two are kind of analogous to each other. So anyways, wave number, this answer, I know for sure. <laughs> I don't have to read the text. Okay, next question. Um, which of the following might increase the wave speed on a stretched string? Ah, so if you remember my lecture on uh, wave and wave speed and traveling waves, this is the thing that I make my students recite. <laughs> wave speed is a property of medium. So in order to change the wave speed, you have to change the medium somehow. So let's see if, uh, um, so where it says increasing wave amplitude, this cannot possibly be the right answer because we are not changing the wave medium. So where it says increasing the yeah, mass per length of the string and increasing string tension, that this, either of these two could be right. They are both changing the medium, the string, stretch the string itself. Um, so, I think you can maybe guess from intuition that uh, intuition that if there's more mass, maybe there's more inertia. So somehow things might move more slowly. <laughs> and if there's more tension, there's more force. So maybe things might move faster. Uh, really, the surest way to answer this is if you have this formula memorized. I happen to have it memorized because it comes up often enough um, that wave speed on a string is given by square root of tension divided by the linear mass density. And if you work out the unit, you know, this is in Newtons and this is in kilograms per meter. If you work out the unit, you will see that the unit here work out to give you the unit of meters per second, uh, which kind of goes to um, 
um, kind of confirming that oh this uh, formula isn't too far um, out of reason that it it's um, something that one can imagine being right <laughs> so uh, so increasing string tension is what would increase the wave speed okay let's uh, keep going this was uh i want to say third one <laughs> let's see uh next one um intensity i oh yeah uh, by the way watch out for uh, kind of letters that we use for different things um so we in this class alone we have used i to mean uh, rotational inertia which uh, is not what we are using it for and did I did you use it for anything else? We might not have used it for anything else. Uh, in physics 4b, you are going to see this as a, a part, one of the possible symbols for current. And I'm just saying all this to say, oh, in this context, it doesn't mean any of those. Read the question, intensity i. Uh, and the, I guess wave intensity i. And whenever they say the word intensity, uh, intensity actually has a fairly consistent meaning. Uh, intensity almost always, uh, in fact, I can't think of a counter example now, so it might be always, it's uh, a power per area. Uh, that is the case when you're dealing with uh, like light intensity, uh, you know, uh, intensity of electromagnetic radiation and intensity of sound, intensity of a bunch of different things. So uh, power comes in the unit of, uh, so power is a change of energy per change of time so um, uh, which would be joule per second or uh, watt <laughs> you know what is a unit of power w a t t um, so unit of intensity the kind of the default way i would write it would be watt per meter square unit of area and let's see yeah i have that here watt per meter square so that would be the unit of intensity and you don't have to know what kind of wave because this is a fairly consistent definition of intensity um the kind of exception or oh, exceptions might be sometimes we talk about intensity of beam in the like a unit of a number of particles in the beam uh, uh, in the case uh, like a power might get replaced by some other thing that measures how strong something is and then you'll be dividing it by area so so, yeah, that's uh, intensity. Um, I think we have two more questions. Good. <laughs> At least one more. <laughs> Let's answer this, and I hope we have one more question remaining. Um, a pulse moving from a high density string into a low density string will partially reflect. Yeah, I, I don't think in this class we cover that so much because, uh, uh, I mean, we don't cover it so much uh, in detail. Because uh, I feel like we kind of do that in physics of 4C with optics. So, yeah, <laughs> partially tracing me. The reflected pulse will be, uh, there's a rule that you have to remember from textbook. And I will give you the answer. The answer here is in phase with the incident pulse. And this is one of those things that I wouldn't really expect you to uh, remember offhand. You just have to know where to look it up. That's really what I would say, you know. In our textbook, you should know where to find this information because it's um, as you go further into uh, mechanics application, there are some facts that are best memorized. Then, <laughs> I, I mean, it's great if you can understand it, but the kind of the whole derivation that goes into this. Uh, uh, potential phase reflection on phase uh, shift on reflection. It's a uh, Kind of those things where um, uh, where um, um, it, it takes a lot of mathematical work to kind of drive it. So and it's a bit too much of a trivia to memorize it each time you see it. So my recommendation would be to kind of file it away in your mind so that you know where to look it up. As long as you know where to look it up, if in your professional setting it comes up, hey, you can look it up then. Uh, I believe since we are talking about wave on a string, it would probably here. If it's not, then I'll look at other um, sections. 
So if speedona stretch a string and they drive to drive the formula that um, oh, I think I did cover this in lecture um, using the textbook section mostly. I think let me I'll go back and check. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, there are other formulas in different context. Oh, and uh, oh, okay, not here. So let's look at the next section. Um, Energy and power, I don't think it would cover that. Let's try interference of wave. That's where it, uh, the topic could come up because if you want to kind of think about a standing uh, wave, sometimes that phase matters. Um, yeah, so here, yeah, boundary condition, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, with a fixed boundary, wave reflects downward. With a free boundary, wave kind of comes back. I think you've seen this demo in some of the standing wave demos. And and this is the section where it talks about that. Um, so this is kind of the in-between where uh, here's the lighter string, heavier string. They should have the same tension. So wave speed is faster here, slower here. And at this boundary, some amount of energy in the instant wave is transmitted through and some is reflected through. And um, yeah. And I think uh, they give you the phase relationship. Um, wow, do they? Oh, it's such an obscure. So they state that information only in this uh, fig figure or caption. It says a wave moving from a low density to a high density results in reflected that is pi out of phase. And when a wave moves to a high density to low density, they are in phase with respect to instant wave. And there's some kind of relationship to what you see up here with the fixed or free end. And that's one way you can kind of remember the role. But I think at the end of the day, I, this is one of those things where I would say, know where to look up the correct answer and don't worry so much about memorizing it because it's kind of what falls into trivia. Okay, I think the last question here. It says a uh, string that is supporting a standing wave. Okay, um, so I'm imagining having something stretched out and kind of, uh, can I do this uh, here? Maybe I can do it with this string. Might be difficult, let's see. I got a string and yeah, you know what, I can't. Because <laughs> it's not a spring, though kind of resonance frequency is too high for me to do it by hand. You've seen plenty of demos. So a stand, in a standing wave, it does move. It moves uh, transversely up and down. Um, and it doesn't have nodes that move along. So nodes are the part of the standing wave that's uh, standing. Uh, in both the sense of the word, At the nodes, they don't move, even not even up and down. And more importantly, the location of the node doesn't move. That's really the standing sense of a standing wave. So I believe, yeah, this mathematical expression describes standing wave. And the way I say that is that it's written as a product of two trig functions, one that depends only on position and one that depends only on time. So imagine a time where cosine of omega t is equal to 1 or minus 1. That'll give you basically this as the shape of your standing wave. And as time changes, the shape itself doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the amplitude of the standing wave. And at such a time where cosine of omega t is zero, you'll have a flat string. And then, you know, half, quarter cycle later, later, it'll be at the maximum amplitude and so on. So this mathematical description gives the correct description of a standing wave. Okay, so I think that's the last uh, question of these reading questions. Again, uh, they are meant to just check your reading. Uh, you got one out of six. You can always use uh, 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 get similar question button to get all six questions uh, if you want to try them. 